Yo, what's up, guys? Why not be reckless? AK, why not be cast down one of the HS commentators, analysts, and grassroots content creators? And we have another HS report where today we're doing a bracket breakdown of all the action that happened during the HS Open Series road to atlanta and instead of hearing me yap all day by myself i decided you know what why don't we come up why don't we bring someone to the stage why don't we bring somebody to the booth a uh a top amateur player if not semi-pro player on the cusp of pro of pro and greatness right now part of the uzi and zuzi twins part of scion esports and apparently Almost 100,000 followers on Twitch. What the freak, bro? <laughs> Yo, Uzi, why don't you tell the people something about yourself that they don't know about? Uh, first and foremost, I just want to say thank you, Tony, for having me on. Uh, I think uh, having some insight with not just uh, pro players, but just the amateur mind is really cool to have. Uh, if you guys don't already know, I'm Uzi and uh, my brother Zuzi. A lot of people know us by that. We're twins, so obviously twins are going to be uh, pretty popular in Halo. Or they're always the hot topic. So, uh, yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, no, it's, it's, on, it's, it's an honor having you here. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, we're we're going to get into the bracket breakdown, um, but... I uh, just want to just pick your mind a little bit, you know, uh, and and talk about your experience with how you've gotten into Halo competitive gaming. Like, what was that road like? How how did we get here in 2024? So it's a long journey. So um, the way I got into Halo, well, well, before I get into Halo, before we competed in Halo and me and my brother, we were competing in Fortnite, and uh, we'll talk about more about that later. But uh, after Fortnite, uh, I'd say about two, three months before Halo Infinite came out, uh, we were just grinding H5. And uh, at the time, I was bad at the game. Like, I I had the comms, I had the, the talent, but I just didn't know. I didn't know Halo. You know, I've always played Halo, but it's not, it wasn't like a competitive experience. So uh, we first started playing with uh, my older brother. His name's Noel St. Nick. I'm sure a few people, a few people know him. And uh, Mr. Alpha, they got a, we, okay. they got us pretty much started our Halo careers and telling us about how Halo works and like spawns, how to play when there's two dead, just simple stuff like that, you know. And so they pretty much passed the torch to me and Angel. We were teaming with them for like for the first year and then after uh the second half of the second year uh we found ty and dev and we've just been working ever since that's crazy that you said you um you were team with mr alpha i'll be honest with you i i didn't know about this but um back in halo 5 before i even got into commentating i used to play eights every single day like that's all we did like i would work Go home, play eights, and most of the lobbies consisted of Mr. Alpha. You know, now everybody knows him as Swish Fives. Um, you know, even Collect and Zolda were back then. But Mr. Alpha definitely was one of the better players within our lobby. I, I can never outgun him. I'll be honest with you. Uh, yeah, and you said you competed with him in the first season of Halo Infinite. Yep, all oh. the way from uh, Raleigh to I'm gonna say Orlando. Yeah. Orlando. That's actually so dope. I, I, I honestly didn't even know that. So it's funny that um we've crossed paths with a player. You know, I, I know him very well. Every every time I see him at any kind of events, it's always love, whether he's playing, whether he's spectating, whatever it is. That's actually awesome. Uh so you said you you talked about you talked about your experience with Halo 5, but you didn't really, you weren't really on the competitive side of things. Tell me yeah. a little bit like about, so what, what, were you trying to compete? Were you more of just like, you know, enjoying a little bit of big team battle? What was that like? I liked Halo 5, like casually while I played other games. I played like, I played Gears a lot. I played Destiny a lot. Those are like my passion games. But whenever I'd hop on Halo 5, it would just be like, I would just be trying to have fun. I'd play like Warzone. I'd play uh, Infection, which was a blast. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, I would never really looked at it comp for uh, its competitiveness, which I I should have because 
I I love that game. Like if that game were to come back competitively, like I would put more time into that than I do in Infinite. You know, it's it's funny you mentioned that. I I like to ask that question before the like the journey before competitive because a lot of people ask me like you know what's my favorite Halo and I'll say I'll say Halo Three. They're like, oh snap, do you like do you love Halo Three? Why did you go back to it? It's a, I'm, and I always tell them, I like, I didn't necessarily like you know love Halo Three for competitive. Like I loved mm-hmm. Halo. I feel like my favorite memories from Halo Three were because I didn't get into competitive until like almost the end of it and i just had a lot of fun with like big team battle team slayer before i was like a super sweat i still played ranked but before i was like this like super sweat i feel like that's when i actually had like the most fun memories then when i started to compete you know it felt sometimes it felt a little bit more like a job sometimes and i, I kind of wish yeah. i wish i had like the best of both worlds where i can compete and play social but I, in my head it was always one or the other i don't know why i could never do both and it doesn't it, it seems kind of weird but I, I to this day i'm like it's either ranked or it's social. I don't do both. I don't know why. <laughs> it's, I feel like that's just something Halo has an issue with when it comes to identity and like making content and being a competitive player. Like when it comes to when it comes to Fortnite, you can be a you could be pro, tier one pro player, like sweating every day all day, and you'll hop in a match and it'll be a ranked match, but you'll have that time to be like so interactive with your chat and like make content and like do random trick shots just because you have the time for it, you have the space for it. But in, when it comes to Halo, you, when you're sweating, you have to be in it like every second of, every second of the game or else you're going to miss something and you're not going to play good and then it's going to tilt you and a bunch of, bunch of stuff like that. You know, that's a, I didn't even think about it. That's a really good point. I feel like if Halo had a battle royale, um, I'd play the living crap out of it, number one, but I feel like my I would make so much content because I feel like, you know, I'm a decent player, nowhere near, you know, obviously your skill level or anything above, but um, I, I, you know, I'm a decent enough player where I can get a couple of clips, but also I like to have fun with this. I feel like if I die to somebody in like, in like a battle royale, I, instead of going to the lobby right away and requeuing, maybe I'll spend some time casting over their gameplay or something like, anyways, as I exactly. try to have like a little bit of fun within the actual game itself outside of just sweating all the time. Um, I, L343, please, bro. Let me get a battle for you, yeah, brother. <laughs> I need, I need <laughs> please. But, uh, well, there was a battle for you that you played, and obviously, um, you know, Fortnite. T- tell me a bit about your journey when it comes to Fortnite. Uh, I, I knew of it from your Twitter bio in the past, but I feel mm-hmm. like I've, I've never got the chance to talk to you about it. T- tell us about your, your journey. So, Fortnite, honestly, it, it started out when it first came out, like, uh, I was in middle school. I was I was in eighth grade, and uh, there was no cross play at the time. But it was always a thing where like we'd come to school and talk about the matches we had the night before, and that was like part of our competitiveness when it came to like that was like my Halo, my H three, <laughs> my H three when like the way other people talk about it. You know, that was what I had my early days of Fortnite. I'd come to school and talk about. <laughs> what i did last night on Fortnite, like how many wins i got like and me and angel me and angel would come to school and no one would be ahead of us when it came to our wins so we'd be like all right we're, we're good bro like let's keep let's keep at it you know it, it, i love i love that kind of stuff and uh uh later into Fortnite, uh we started playing world cup and we got our first computer right and you know a lot of people in that position where me and angel get a like me and angel got a computer right and so i i honestly just let him have the computer i i didn't like i didn't really want to fight over it like because i know i know if he gets good enough uh without like splitting the time on the computer then he'll be able to make money and which he did uh in world cup they were giving like an insane amount of money he like he didn't even know he made money like yeah. <laughs> that's that's insane and so i let him have the computer he still talks about it to this day he was like yo i don't know why you let me have the computer like that's crazy of you and i'm like because i don't know i'm just that type of person and so uh i get my computer i'd say like a little less than a year maybe like eight months later seven months later my family 
like I wanted it so much like I did whatever my family wanted me to do or uh stuff like that but once I got my computer uh we started playing competitive duos uh it was uh chapter 2 season 1 where like we really were like getting into it competitively and we're so new to just the competitive space that we didn't really know what we were getting into you know we were just a good duo everyone everyone knew that we've been all we've been playing games with each other since like as long as i could remember so by the time duos comes out um you know we're just we're just playing we're just doing our thing and uh we didn't really make a lot of a lot of money out of duos it was more like a test of waters kind of thing but we were definitely dedicated and so uh trios came out and we only ever teamed with one other person in fortnite like when it comes to teams and like being a competitive player our philosophy is like you can bounce between teammates like in halo people love to do it uh in fortnite people love to do it even more in my opinion uh but that's just not how we uh that's not our philosophy when it comes to teammates so we've only ever had i can count on my hands how many teammates i had oh yeah and so trios came out uh we made a decent amount of money on trios with it's it's great honestly it's crazy the amount of money fortnite throws even till this day <laughs> uh uh so trios trios came out uh we've only ever teamed with one other person what else can i say uh let's talk about let's talk about the 40k right the 40k on twitch <laughs> okay so um i'm just going through my whole fortnite uh legacy in like a snapshot so the 40k on twitch uh, so we won this tournament. It was a it was a Twitch Rivals tournament, and um, there were these like limited time game modes in Fortnite, which wasn't a traditional Fortnite when it, you know uh, the building and the and the shooting. It was like it was a Marvel game mode, and so it was it was very different, very different. So me, uh. Zuzi and uh our teammate at the time Max uh we were we literally made free money just playing 3 hours of a limited time game mode like the freest money I've ever made in my life <laughs> shoot and um uh after the tournament uh I think it was like 1500 split between the three of us and um uh later that night I got a DM from uh Nate Hill he used to be on phase uh i don't know if you know him um he dm'd me that night and he was like yo uh, i seen you guys doing good on, on the in this ltm uh was wondering if you guys wanted to play uh twitch rivals with me and uh uh at the time angel couldn't play couldn't participate in i would he asked me to pick two one other person which would be me nate hill and then one other person but angel couldn't play in it because for twitch rivals you have to stream Wow. And so I was like, you know what? Like, if I'm going to do this with anyone, it's going to be with my teammate, uh, Max. And so long story short, uh, we won the Twitch Rivals tournament, which was $24,000 split. Yeah, crazy money, <laughs> crazy money. Wow. I'm, and I'm 16 years old at the time. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know what to do with that kind of money. So, uh, that's not the only part. We haven't even gotten to the 40k. So after we won the Twitch Rivals tournament, um, Epic Games sponsored my stream. So they had drops on my stream. They made it so where if someone subbed to my stream, uh, they got more benefits. If someone uh, followed my stream, and if someone interacted with my stream in any sort of way, when it comes to the chat, bits, uh, subs, they got some sort of drop or incentive to do so. And so I just, at at the time, I got to sixty thousand followers. <laughs> and so when that ended, uh, honestly, it was pretty difficult to see how like I can go from four thousand viewers to average of 20,000 viewers so I I just didn't feel like streaming anymore cuz to see that success and then 
have it plummet. I just didn't know how to deal with that at that age. But yeah. No, and and it's a real thing for content creators. Like I feel like um um there was a point where I was uh averaging like uh a hundred people, almost two hundred people, and then I would try to like switch to like Apex or something. Um like I was I would play I would play Halo in the beginning. I was like, all right, well let me try to switch it up a little bit instead of going offline and I go to Apex and you know go down to like you know, ten or or twenty people, or, or like eight people, and I'm like, yeah, damn, like it, like as a content creator, like you look at that, you look at that, you're like, bro, like, it, it, and 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 it, it like on some real stuff, like it it hits hard. It's like, damn, am yep. I? Am, you start thinking about yourself. I was, I start, well, at least I started thinking about myself. I'm like, am I not oh, entertaining yeah. enough? What what like what mm-hmm. do I got? What do I got to do? And and like, and it, it's it sucks. It's one of the reasons why. Like I I I'm I, that's one of the reasons why I never wanted to do content creation full time uh it's 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 a it's a real thing and uh and it hits hard so i i know a little bit of what your what your experience obviously not at that level like you know i've never been 20 no 4 000, 000 or anything like that but i can yeah. i can see where you're coming from um when it comes to that drop off and especially at a young age i feel like i dealt with it and and People don't know this. I'm in my 30s. You know, I'm in. I'm in <laughs> so for for I would imagine it could hit even harder when you haven't even like you're you're 16 years old. Man. Yeah, you're not even a developed person. <laughs> like how like how do you even like I I can't even fathom how you even had the mental maturity to still even pursue any kind of competitive gaming after something like that when you went through that kind of, something dramatic like that at, at 16 years old. Um, spe- uh, speaking of which, like, you know, you know, you started competing when you were young, you know, I- I've competed in Halo for a little bit. I've competed in, uh, in basketball for a very long time. And, you know, there's obviously a lot of ups, you know, especially when you've had long-term teammates, but you know, there's a few downs, you know, there's, there's a few arguments. There's, there's, so, there's things that have to be said, um, to that maybe are uncomfortable conversations and whatnot. Yeah, being that, being that you've teamed with your twin brother, you know, I'm assuming y'all live together and whatnot. Yeah. Like, like, have there, I, I'm sorry, there's been good conversation. Has there ever been like a bad like blowing out where y'all two didn't even talk for like a whole day or something? Or has it always been good? <laughs> um, there's always gonna be those those hard moments, but like, uh, it takes years to build like that kind of relationship with someone where you know regardless of the conversation you're having now, like the future is always going to be better than the moment. Like there's no way, like I, I argue with him every day. We're not, we're, <laughs> we don't always see eye to eye and we're okay with knowing that. So continuing from that helps us be not just better brothers, but like better teammates in and outside the game. Well, like you kind of mentioned, it's not just you teaming with your brother long term. It's you said you can literally count the amount of teammates that you had on on, on your hands or on your hand, and yeah. and you've carried that same mentality. And again, a very mature mater- uh, mentality for somebody your age. Um, Thank you. Going into, of course, going into Halo. Now um, going. Yeah. Go, now, I, I just want to put this out there. There's only, this for people at home, obviously, you, you might know this. To my knowledge, there's only three teams that stayed the same going to the 2024 season. And it was FaZe, Sentinels, and Scion Esports. It was the only three that I could think of. And mind you, Sentinels made a big change. So really, yeah, yeah. as far as the two teams that have stayed together, you know, from season two to season three, it's you and FaZe. Like, is, what are the advantages to that to keeping long-term teammates like that? Um, I look at it as like, I see more of the disadvantages of having different teammates. So like, say FaZe, for example, right? They're all well-established, well-established players, right? So in my echelon of play, top amateur or whatever you want to call it, um, in my opinion, I don't see how it could be possible to beat FaZe if you haven't been teaming longer than they have. You can't just create a, a, 
a god squad like they have basically a god squad to then compete with your own team that you've made a week before the tournament i just don't see how it's possible like they've all been playing halo at the top level for so long that the only way i see like for a team to beat that team is to team have better chemistry than they do you know they're already gonna have natural chemistry just because they've been playing the game at such a high level so what you're gonna have is having your own team's chemistry that's how i see it i I mean i love that i feel like you know the (laughs) what what, was what's the old saying you know uh, hard work beats skill when skill don't put in hard work or practice beats skill when skill don't practice. And I feel yeah, like that yeah, can be yeah. translated. I butchered it completely, but I feel like that no, can be translated. You, you know, if, if you're going against a team that maybe have higher firepower than you're like, oh, they, they shooters, they this, that, and the third, but that way your, your teamwork is on lock. You, got, you guys have been screaming. You guys have been putting the work. You've seen multiple scenarios that you guys have film reviewed and discussed with each other. Like, hey, I want to do something like... I, we, we need to do this when this happens. When this happens, we need to do this. Like, it's so funny when I'm playing ranked matchmaking and a team goes, or my team is communicating, we go three down and my teammates stop talking. And I feel like, well, that's the time you need to talk the most. Now we're coming yeah, off a exactly. of spawn and they know what the, f- they know where, where we're spawning and they're going to punish us. We need to be on the same wavelength. And it's funny because in right matchmaking, everybody gets quiet because they get mad. Like, no, that's the time we really need to figure out what we need to do. Otherwise, we're about to get cycled. And I feel like when you've seen that experience, what what are you gonna do when it's three when when you're three down and enemy teams four up? What are you gonna do when when you have staggered spawners? Are you waiting in this situation for a teammate to come off and spawn, come up to you? Like, like there's so many different scenarios that obviously you have to be able to adapt mid-game. But I feel like if you've already done the work. You've already done the review and you guys have talked about general situations, you know, almost like a playbook. <laughs> it's Eli loves that. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I say, I, by the way, I say that because I believe Side Esports actually has a playbook. <laughs> uh, but I feel like I, I feel like because you've talked about these situations, you've been there, done that you are better prepared than a team that's all just relying on just gun skill. Yeah, it, 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 to me, it makes perfect sense. Well, my team, we do have, we do have, uh, we go by principle when it comes to most of our situations, which is why it seems like we have a playbook, which is because there's always a set principle when it comes to like certain situations. Like you say, when you, when we're staggered, like we understand that either you have to wait off your spawn or, uh, you have to get in the map and take a fight so that we can alleviate pressure off the map. Like those kinds of principles are just what we apply to our game. And so that's why people say like, we look so organized because we just work by those principles and that's it. It's, it's been, it's been amazing to see, you know, your guys's growth. Like I, I've been a fan of sign esports for a very long time. You know, I, I'm, I'm just learning about, you know, you and your twin brother and even Ty as far as here in Halo Infinite, but I've known Dark Matter since Halo 5 um, yeah. for, for a very long time. Uh, we, we, we play matchmaker once every once in a while. I got put on his friends. I was like, oh, stab on Dark Matter's friends. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> like, I, I feel, uh, and, and seeing you guys grow and having the mentality you have, like, like obviously there's very t- there's very good teams that that I want to root for and whatnot that are very skilled. But not only are you guys skilled, but generally, you're great people. And I think that to me is something that I want to root for. Like Ty is one of the nicest people I ever met. I've never seen Dark Matter with uh without a smile on his face. Like you even coming down and sitting here and, and and hearing the way you communicate and the way you look at the at the game, it's on a professional level. And I know your twin brother, he got passion. I've I've seen it, I've, <laughs> and, I, and, I, and, I, and I've seen and you know what I've I've seen it on wins, I've seen it on losses, I've seen it. So just like just being generally great great players, but also great individuals, it's one of the reasons why I root for Scion Esports. Before we transition to um to the uh, actual bracket review, 
So we're probably going to fast forward to round four, but you did mention your matchup against Still Deciding, and obviously Still Deciding, a fantastic team. Uh, you know, Colette coming in fresh off of being dropped from that Proton Gaming, who now I believe are going by Pure, at least in this tournament, uh, joining the likes of Rami and Manny, and the return of New Jersey's finest in King J. Still Deciding, come up with the 3 0 against Scion Esports. Talk to me. Um, That series. We always well, we always feel like we beat ourselves because the win is always in our hands. And whenever we lose a series like this, we just we're all just so upset and pissed, and like we just want to get straight to it, straight to the bottom of it. Why did we lose? What what was what were the catalysts in our gameplay, right? So uh, game one oddball, they took the first round. And then we took the second round, scrapping the ball really well. And then the third round, they just they got a uh, camo stalker shoddy in the beginning of the match and got 85 points, and that's the game. And then uh, live fire game two, it was 48-50. Uh, we had two camos that uh, we should one we should have gotten away with, and another camo that we hadn't popped that we should have gotten, and they had every sniper. And so if we negate one of those bad camo plays, if we fight for one more sniper or don't give them a sniper, then that game goes completely different. Um, you know, we're, you know, we're a confident team when it comes to our slayers because um, when it comes to our objective, um, we try to get in the mindset of just being slayers until we have to be that objective player, which we're really good at slaying. Like, when it comes, like, um, I'll just give it the Orlando Land for an example. When we beat uh, Renegade Bound, Tusk, and Legend, like, those are honestly one of the best players in the world. Those are top 10 players, right? <laughs> like, that's, that Slayer was huge for us. And, and not just like the win, but how we beat them, you know? It wasn't just like, it wasn't that that close, you know. We we yeah. had pace for a majority of the match, so we're we're confident going into live fire slayer, just slayers in general. And then the Argyle, which I spoke about earlier. Um, every time like this looks like a three zero on paper, right? But it feels like a game five. Like that's how it feels. It doesn't feel like we're getting uh we're getting shit on or whatever it might be you know that i feel like the 3-0 just doesn't just doesn't show how much work we put in well um just like in any double elimination matchup you're gonna have some time in the lower bracket uh and again uh, we'll, we'll talk about that uh going into this i want to talk more about round four so we're gonna jump right into we're going to jump right into the team that obviously got a, a win against y'all and still deciding mm -hmm. they match up against Sentinels. And obviously Sentinels have been looking very good since bringing on Precision. Uh, we expected big things going uh, into London. I feel like we still going to expect some big things come out of Sentinels. Meanwhile, still deciding, having so much to prove. In fact, Collect actually previously on the Sentinels roster was dropped. So I'm sure he wanted to get a win uh, just like Manny, no, and Manny and Collect both not on that Proton game roster and King J wanted to show hey he's still got it. he's still here still decided matchup against Sentinels Sentinels with the 3-0 if there's any about this matchup that you wanted to talk about whether it's a player whether it's a matchup whether it's, if anything surprised you the floor is yours um honestly what surprised me is uh how easily King J could just come back to the game after not playing what two events Right. Yeah, all year. <laughs> yeah, all year. Right. Uh, I, I think that just goes to show how good of a player he is. Would like to just come back and be just so fundamentally sound when it comes to Halo and like that's impressive. Um, I think when it comes to just this matchup, I think it's I think Sentinels is just so good at like shutting down 
really fast plays that happen on the map, like Collect likes to do and Manny likes to do, or even even that that whole roster, right? Like they're gonna try to get out on the map as fast as possible, as hard as possible, and do as much damage as they can. Like even if they die or have a supposed bad death, like the amount that it does for their team and their spawners is crazy and sentinels just shuts it down really well i was watching the vod last night and they're just they're making those deaths look really bad for still deciding i mean yeah they, they may sentinels may not be the fastest team in the league but like you said they definitely yeah. if they see you playing too fast they will they will shut you down they will counter that with their yeah. type of gameplay and with that even though they're not the speediest team they tend to control yeah. the pace of the game um, yep. and they're good at it. Uh, yeah, still right. deciding. I, I will say my. I I feel like a lot of people probably are surpri surprised that Sentinels won. Uh, they're the favorites going into this matchup. What I am surprised this was a three zero. I feel yeah. like the still deciding roster is good enough to take a game off of Sentinels, whether it be in an objective or even in a Slayer. So. That, to me, surprised me a little bit. I would love to see this be a 3-1 because I personally have a lot of high expectations for still deciding, and I want to see what this team's got, but still new, so we'll give, we'll give them a chance, right? <laughs> well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give uh, Lethal some credit because he was shooting them back that series and after getting Fiber, which I, I me personally... I think he was dropped from that phase roster because he couldn't play online infinite. That's how I see it. I don't think I don't think they drop lethal um if he doesn't have a bad experience online cuz that's pretty much that's pretty much most of halo, right? Online halo, so if you're struggling with that then it's going to be hard to compete at lane. You're going to have a you're going to have a worse seed and which they did. And you're not gonna win events like Worlds. Yeah, I also, did it with Renegade. I love the shout out towards Lethal because I feel like I, I feel like and and maybe it was the online experience at his home and now going into the office or or having fiber and whatnot. But yeah. like I feel like even even on land, like I feel like his stats have been going up and up. Like I I felt yeah, like. Yeah. I felt like even maybe the drop from phase, maybe not instantly, but like very shortly after, like really motivated him. And I, I feel like obviously one of the best players ever to touch a controller for Halo, but you know somehow has even elevated his game as like a, as a as a slayer on the stat sheet. And I thought it was actually really good. So I, I love the shout out towards Lethal, and I'm gonna agree. I think uh, I like what I've seen from Lethal so far. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, incognito versus bittersweet. Now, for those of you guys who don't know or didn't watch the previous video that came out before this one, incognito pretty much wow. native gaming. <laughs> so native dropped uh, McWin. Uh, King Nick, who is seemingly filling in for APG. I know he played with complexity in that Forge uh, 5K tournament, but it seems like King Nick is filling in for APG. APG, we believe, is still in Europe on vacation after London a little bit, and then you have Barcode and Gilkey. So it seems like it's the it seems like the roster gonna be Barcode, Gilkey, Carb, uh, excuse me, Descendant, and APG. But again, don't quote me on that. Nothing's official just yet. They could be trolling. Meanwhile, bittersweet. Uh, you got Envor and Piggy mortally, and Action Jackson is back with the roster. Uh, uh, incognito, bittersweet. We won in favor of bittersweet. Talk to me. Honestly, I did not see this side of the bracket. That's actually a crazy win for bittersweet. It's a good win. Um. Gilkey, Barcode, King Nick, and Carmea or Descendant. That's a that's a solid team. Yeah. If that bef before the series, I have all my money on uh, Incognito, but uh, Bittersweet got that one. Wow, that's crazy. Where did you see the series? I didn't get the chance to watch this series personally. I was I was actually working while this uh, while this tournament was going on uh, before oh. I started casting, and it was very busy at work. And I was mad because I'm like, usually it's like slow, and I'll watch the mm -hmm. tournament while I'm working, and then like by the time it's time for me to cast, I know everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I missed all of it. I came in. I was like, yo, what happened? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's how I feel too. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, we played um a uh, little bit of. Actually, we'll get into that later. We'll get into that later. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, I feel like I'm not. I'm not so much surprised for Bittersweet over over. Incognito. I, I mean, I still see them as native gaming, but um, I feel like Bittersweet's really good. I think native have been, in my opinion, native have been struggling in this year, and have been you know from cycling out and from the moment they picked up like Neptune and tried that out and it didn't work. Then yeah, they tried to go yeah. for last shot and that didn't work out for them. And you know we've seen some mix and matches, and now the drop of Mickwin, which is gonna, it's gonna, you're gonna feel that. I feel like. Right now, Incognito are trying to find an identity. And it's funny, Incognito, you know, they're, they're trying to conceal their identity. They're trying to find an identity <laughs> yeah, right now. Good name. That's a good name. And we don't even have APG on the roster. So I, if there's any time to upset Native, uh, sorry, excuse me, Incognito, I think now's the time because we're, 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 we've been trying to figure things out all year. And now yeah. we're really trying to figure things out yeah, after yeah, the drop yeah. of McWin and APG not there. So I, 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 I bittersweet. They're good, man. Their piggy yeah, yeah. is a shooter. I match against a piggy on a Smurf in, in matchmaking. Dude dropped thirty nine on my head on Argyle CTF, and it was like not even oh. those like 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 random. He's in like these like you know random kills that weren't important. Like dude, he was shutting me down and the whole entire team. So screw yeah. you, piggy. Uh- <laughs> yeah, I think piggy is like. I think he's one of the most like whenever I watch his stream, like I watch his stream with Angel or whatnot. And we're just watching him play MM, and I'm just like, yo, this guy's, like, so disciplined. Good. Nasty. Very disciplined Halo. We won bittersweet advance forward. Uh, Incognito down to the lower bracket. Obviously, we'll talk about them a little bit later. Meanwhile, on the other side of the bracket, we got some game fives on our hand. Uh, hand, This game five was crazy. (laughs) Did I cast this? I wonder if I... Oh shit! Everything just kind of blends together sometimes. <laughs> I'm wondering if I casted this. I know I casted a couple game fives and Cloud Nine and Reversal Perf. Reversal Perf, you're almost pulling off uh, another upset. We obviously see Chris Common uh, and Haynes, who have been teaming ever since the old the first season of Oxygen Esports mm-hmm. days. Then Breaking Shot joined them for a little bit, like they were they were a trio for a bit. And now you're seeing yeah. Super CC evades coming in out of uh, seemingly out of nowhere for this with this roster, and I was like, okay, I, there's, there's a running joke that 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 Chris Cobbett even trade try would say that I never I never uh, like a roster that has Chris Cobbett on it. And it's not true. Not true whatsoever. <laughs> uh, and, and in fact, trade try and Chris Cobbett, I love this roster right here. I think I think there's so much potential within the reversal perfect roster in fact you even take a cloud nine roster who have been very good since bringing on suspector and sabbath they've been very good and yeah. you take them to a game five and almost beat them cloud nine versus reversal perfect what are your thoughts um sometimes like i'd watch them play series and uh reversal perfect and like they're playing so good like out of their minds and like once the game gets like super tight and really close, like C9 always finds an in or whatever it might be, or like uh reversal perfy takes a bad death and it's a big in for C9. Like whenever I watch their series, they they're playing so well. I like they're they're a team I definitely respect. You know, like I believe they're they can get to that top eight, that top six. If any team that's top twelve right now, love that, love that, and uh, yeah. it was Cloud Nine that did come out with the win here. Uh, obviously, advancing forward. Uh, I don't. I mean, Cloud Nine have just been really good. The moment got put together, yeah. they beat out Optic. They upset Optic in the very next tournament. They're they're good. They're going to yeah, the yeah. semifinals, and we'll talk about that in a little bit because first, got to find out who they're gonna be playing against. And that's Pure versus this new complexity roster. Pure electing to drop Collect and go with Cherished. And we talked about this on the last video. Like, I was just 
raving and ranting about uh, Pure was going by Proton Gaming, then picking up Collect, and I talked about how amazing the squad is going to do. This is this this is finally a great team, uh, a great move that works for both. And I was just kind, I was all about it. And right after London decided to drop uh, Collect to go with Church, in fact, Trey Try in the chat uh, earlier had said that Collect is a phenomenal player, but he feels that but he feels like Cherish fits what the roster wants to do a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, on the other side of things, complexity, uh, they lost out on Precision, who goes over to Sentinels. They pick up Sparty. They lose out on Sparty, who has lost out on his entirety of the year. He's going to be um, appealing that. Uh, complexity, trying to just find a roster uh, that they can stick with. They decide to drop the Sentinel as well to bring on a longtime uh, duo of Ryan Noob and Rain, and also Mickwin, who comes in. They got... They got swept by pure. I complexity, you know, a lot of people are gonna underrate them, but pure three owing them. That's not good on the side of complexity. Yeah, it's not. Um I honestly think that this pure roster, uh they have so much potential. Like last shots come up and then just Druck and Talik playing Halo for such a long time together and even Cherish, I was watching the series last night uh, while I'm going to bed, and Cherish was just peeling them with the sniper. He's like, he peeled like three people off spawn on live fire. And I'm watching, I'm like, yo, like, <laughs> what? It, it, it was a crazy 3 0. Um, I don't think complexity is a weak roster. Uh, who's on that roster? Rain, Rhinoob, Huss, and um. Uh, sorry, Rain, Rhinoob, Huss, and Huss. Mickwin. Mickwin. Sorry, I forgot yeah, I blocked right. this screen when I moved this. Sorry, no, it's on me. <laughs> no, nah, no worries, no worries. Yeah, I still think that roster is really strong, but it definitely, it's definitely um, what's the word I'm looking for? Unorthodox. Mm -hmm. All right, with Rain coming out of basically retirement, I didn't think Rain was coming back to the game. No one. I'm not sure if anybody knew he would. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna have the inside scoop being a amateur top amateur player, but yeah, I didn't think we'd see Ryan uh, Rain back in the game. Ryan, Rain and Ryan Noob are like they're like a duo, right? They're like a solidified duo. Oh yeah, since since Halo Three, uh, well, the second half of Halo Three, uh, MCC, they've they've been teaming for a while now. Okay, okay. I want to say maybe like four, maybe. I mean, obviously, the three most of the three years of Halo Infinite, obviously, even going back since Eight United, and then before that in MCC, they were always together. I've played poker, and I've had both of them at my freaking table. Like at that point, I feel like they're teaming against me in poker. <laughs> like, I mean, I want to say maybe four or five years now. We're talking about these two together, and only for a short amount of time were they apart. Like very short. Mm -hmm. uh, um. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I just think. I think. Um. Even Mickwin, right? Like that roster they had. What, what what was it? It was Mickwin, Tapping, Barcode, and Gilkey, mm -hmm. and they got what top four? That was that uh, Wally, uh, a native white Wally. Uh, of uh, the the first that event was, of season two. First event of season no, two. Uh, first event of Charlotte. Charlotte. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Some place in North Charlotte. Carolina. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah. yeah, that that was a crazy event for like a roster like that. You wouldn't think that those four combined would pull out a top four, you know? Out of the think, open bracket too. That was crazy. Out of the open bracket. Out of the open bracket. Right, yeah. right. That's I've never seen have we seen a team go further than that? Out of the open bracket. I mean if you if you want to count the Sentinels when they didn't have Royal Two because he was uh, banned for that one, but I, that that doesn't really count. Like <laughs> like I mean, as far as the HCS, I'm gonna say we haven't seen anything like that. Um maybe back in the MLG days, maybe, but I it's mm. it's up there at least in a top two, top three performance from any team out of open. Yeah, yeah. I think McQuinn just does really well with like the right teammates like he can be the star player on the team or like i just feel like their roster isn't just isn't gonna do as well as they expect them to do like when mickland's on a good team he makes the team 
Uh, that's how I feel. Yeah, I feel like with this complexity roster, a lot of people are going to say that th- from the outside looking in that they lack a bit of firepower. Um, now, in in order to make up for that, you you still have four very aware, very very self aware as well, but very like just good players that have a, a advanced understanding of the game. Yeah. And I think there might be Our value. Players. I believe there might be value in that. Oh yeah, high, uh, high IQ players and also great communicators. Like when you think of uh, Rain and uh, Huss, they they're very vocal when it comes to in the comms. And obviously Ryan Noob as well. Uh, Mick Wynn, Little uh, uh, fun story about Mick Wynn is he almost wanted to drop Neptune because Neptune wouldn't small talk or call out while shooting. This was back in back in Halo Five, the first time they team, not the second oh, time really? coming into Halo oh, Infinite. Okay. Uh, okay. Like he had to like help build, and he had to help like kind of build them up, and like, hey, look, we did that those comms and whatnot, and uh, and and help him become a better communicator. So I feel like if there's one thing on this squad, it's I feel like as far as the intangibles, there's so much of it, but they're gonna have to really outsmart and outplay teams. Like they, like there, 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 there may be times where they're going to be winning objective games and getting outslayed. Like, yeah. it, like it, it's going to be that type of thing when it comes to complexity. But yeah. I, I'm excited. I'm always, I always like looking at interesting rosters. And to me, this is a very interesting roster. And maybe it upsets people. And maybe it doesn't. <laughs> I don't think it will. <laughs> well, That's me well, personally. Hey, I, I I respect it, and, and uh, I think a lot of people are going to agree with you. Um, yeah. This leads us into our matchups for Thursday. Mm-hmm. Sentinels and Bittersweet are going to be going at it. That's going to be that's going to be interesting to watch. You talked about uh, Bittersweet a lot, especially Piggy. We talked mm-hmm. about Sentinels a lot, and specifically Lethal. Um, on the other side of things, Cloud Nine and Pure gonna be playing each other and and yeah. that's it and now normally if i have a guest on i try I try to go easy on them i say i ain't gonna put them on the spot and i I, yeah. I, I, I always say that but you said you want to be put on the spot yeah who help. wins this matchup since it was a bittersweet and what's the score line best of hmm. five in a, like if they were to have a best of five or if oh they're gonna have it thursday it will be the best of five who wins this matchup oh 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 right um. Hmm. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Sentinels wins. But I think I think it'll be a game four or a game five. Okay. I, yeah. Yeah. Because I think Sentinels does have their weaknesses, and um, I think the right teams exploit that. Just because of you know team changes and uh, scrims that they don't get. Like maybe roster changes uh change the way some of the top teams play. Um yeah, I think it'll be a close game four or game five on, on Sentinels. Okay, okay. And um yeah, I'm gonna go same thing, Sentinels bittersweet. I I can see it going to game five, but if I had to put money on I would say game four. Uh I'll say Sentinels advance. And then from there Cloud Nine and Pure is gonna be an interesting matchup. This this is a bit of a toss up here. I think you can make a good argument for either one of these sides. Yeah. It's gonna be a best of five. Uh, who wins this and who joins Sentinels in the winners bracket finals? I got Pure, three zero. Woo, three zero. I believe I believe in that roster. I believe in last shot. Like that team is. I feel like they. Like when Last Shot came up and he joined this roster, I f- like watching them play. He just looks so, like, he looks natural on the map. It doesn't look like he doesn't belong on this team. You know, like the way they play, the way they flow, like their philosophy of the game, how fast they move on the map. Like, he just works so well with them. And uh, I think C Nine has their strengths. Um. Uh. Even. I want to speak specifically about like about Tusk. Um, when we played them at Orlando, um, Tusk wasn't their star player, but I feel like that's because of just his teammates and his environment. I think this team specifically makes Tusk a really good player. 
Like, and um, in our series against him in Orlando, the sl- the Slayer specifically, he didn't Tusk didn't have a kill to midway through the match. Right, I watched that vod probably like ten times, just because of our pop off at the end. But I think I really do believe Tusk, like, shines in this roster because of his team. Okay. Yeah, I, I, and that's I, a good thing in my opinion. Oh yeah, for sure. I, I feel like I, I've I've always heard in the past like Tusk, uh, like uh, one of his one of his biggest strengths was like his long range shot. Like we I already talked about his long range shot, and then I got a chance to talk to him a bit when he was streaming. And and I asked him, I was like, what, 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 in your opinion, what is it? What uh, what is your your strengths? And he, and he talked about that like, he feels like he has a, a great mind for the game, but on top of that, his communications really where he shines. Um, so I think it's just a lethal combination that you have within a player like Tusk, who who came from at one point he was coaching Phase for a bit, uh, when he was when he didn't have a roster, and then mm-hmm. going from like a, a coach to like having an in game coach type of player. I definitely think yeah. I definitely think he adds value to a team outside of just the stat line, and we've seen him have Absolutely. some good stats as well. Um, it's funny because Trey tried to ask me who's gonna win this tournament, and I said I, I said normally I would go Sentinels, but I wanted to go a little bit uh, a little bit crazy. So I said Pure, but just be I mean you went three zero in favor of Pure. Like, oh, that's disrespectful right there. I I, I, I like that roster. <laughs> I, I like them. I like those guys. They're I almost want to say Cloud Nine win this in a game five, just to just to go against you as as far as on this. I'm like I I like Pure a lot. I really do. But I also will say I really like Cloud9 too. And I don't necessarily, I mean, like I said, I, I feel like you could make a good argument for either or. And mm-hmm. if you asked me beforehand, I would say, you know what? Give me give me pure in a game five, but just to go against you on this matchup, uh, we're going to clip this. I'm going to say Cloud9 in a game five beat out pure. Uh, just right, have some fun right. with that. <laughs> uh, I say that because they were, they were just playing out of their minds last night. And Taking reversal perfect to a game five, like if you're not gonna take that three zero in the same way they did to complexity, which are, in my opinion, more established players. Not to discredit CC and Matt; those are they're all talented players. But I think just the way the bracket goes, I think Pier three zero's them. And I'm biased. I love that roster. <laughs> Vera said, we see, uh, we're going to start off in round five and then just kind of briefly uh, go over it because we're going to talk about the actual matchups that we're going to see on Thursday. So Stop the Glaze 3 over Lightest Minute, which leads to Reversal Perfy versus Stop the Glaze. Um, God, this team name. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I thought if I said it too many times, I was going to get canceled. <laughs> HL's going to fire me. I was like, it's the freaking name, man. Uh, <laughs> Reversal Perfy, uh, Common Breaking Shot, Haynes, and Super CC going to go up against Stop the Glaze, featuring the People's Champ and Gunplexion, Squilly, Collective, and Leaderness. Um, I did. Collective has been really good. I remember Squilly was making a lot of noise in like early early on in the seasons, uh, and obviously yeah. we got to see what Leaderness and Gunplexion had to offer uh, together uh, back at Orlando, and that was really fun to watch. I my my heart is telling me go with Stop the Glaze, but my brain is telling me, dude, it's Reversal Perfy. It, it could be an upset, but I don't know, man. I think Reversal Perfy I have to go into this matchup feeling like the favorites. Yeah, I feel that too. I feel like I feel like Gunny's team they had when it comes to any team like this against Reversal Perfy, like I feel like if you, you got to bring it out in that series if if you really want to beat CC, I feel like CC is like the ultimate gatekeeper. If you want to beat <laughs> if you want to beat this team, like you got to pull out like maximum Halo. You pull out all the stops, because if you don't, like, they're just, I feel like they just take advantage of you and, like, every way you can when it comes to Halo. Like, they'll cycle you, they'll, they'll, they'll split you and get you guys split and spawn you guys together and still continue to do the same thing. I just feel like they can do all the things Halo, and if you can't stop that, like, being a top amateur team like Gunny's team, then... You're going to lose. But I do believe in them. I do. 
Yeah, I, I feel like I it, it's to me it's not the the ceiling that I'm worried about with Stop the Glaze. Like I know they have the potential, the ceiling to beat mm-hmm. Reversal Perfy. The mm-hmm. problem for me is like is the floor. Like if we ran this series, you know, in a simulation twenty times, yeah, I'm gonna say yeah. fifteen of those times Reversal Perfy wins that. There's five yeah. times where Stop the Glaze is gonna win it. And they, they, you know, I agree. It, and, but. I like that. There's 15 times reversal Perfy does, and and I feel like whenever I see a matchup like that, I just lean to the team with more experience at the pro level. I feel like if they've been there, done that, and it's going to be more comfortable, more calm in a situation. Um, so when those games do get close and they slow down and, and you're talking about two or three plays are going to be the determining factor on who wins it, mm-hmm. that's why I feel like reversal Perfy are going to come out on, on top in those in those situations. Yeah. Yeah, it's always gonna be those those uh those moment those that one moment in a match that defines the rest of the rest of the game that really do it when it comes to the amateurs against the uh, higher echelon of uh, competitive play when you play against players with that experience against the pros. It's always gonna be those cat that catalyst in the game that either wins you the game or loses you the game. Well, we'll see exactly what happens there because that matchup will happen on Thursday. Meanwhile, uh, you know what? We'll, we'll actually open up this one here just because it obviously uh, includes somebody in this call. It ain't me. Scion uh, <laughs> Esports with a 3 1 over F. Oh, my ops. God bless. Uh, <laughs> uh, I recognize Camp for sure. Lursky, I remember he teamed with. Um, I remember actually he teamed with Last Shot and. Uh, Maisky and, and yeah yeah Maisky, yeah Lersky, Lasha and mm-hmm. um Schlegs. Yeah, I remember, I remember that. I think I think Schlegs and Maisky are actually cousins or brothers actually. They're they're brothers. Brothers, there we go. I I I don't know too much of Captain Morgan though or seven six twenties. Uh not too sure. That's, that's that's clips. He goes by clips. Okay, I know clips. Okay, never mind. I know yeah, clips. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. I didn't know the, the the Reddit name. Then I don't know about Captain Morgan then. I got. I got. I got to do my research. I, I, I usually. I. I usually know most of the players. So I. I. I I'm being tested right now, mm-hmm. but three one in favor of y'all. Talk to me about this series. Um, when it came to the series, like we knew we could beat them, but if we're not like playing our game, then we know we can lose to a team like this. Like, um. We know that we beat ourselves. It's just we always do. And so if we let that happen to a team like this, which they will take advantage of, then we're gonna lose. So before the series we were just like, yo, like every time bef- like when we play a series that we're more likely to win, in our opinion, then we we always say like, yo, like nothing's guaranteed, so like we're just gonna play our Halo. That's it. Ty says that a lot. Simple as that. Play play y'all's Halo and uh, and let the chips fall as they may. Well, the chips will fall, and they they've stacked up against you going up against a complexity roster. Obviously, we talked about complexity a bunch of times. This is a very interesting roster that is that has come together. Um, Brian Noob, Rain, Hus, McWin, and fresh off of some craziness going on with this squad. I feel like they're the favorites going into this matchup, but they're not mm-hmm. unbeatable. If you don't, uh, I'll give you an out on this. If you don't want to talk about the matchup, you don't have to. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know I'd love to. Please, please, the floor is yours. Um. So we know that uh, Gunny's team speed ran them uh, on the pit, even though they still lost that series, and we actually play that map. Uh, on Thursday against them, and flag maps are usually like our strong suit. That's usually like our better map, and so uh, we feel really confident. Not just that map, but the rest of the series. So um, I, 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 you know, I always believe we can beat anybody we play against. It doesn't matter who it is. It could be Phase. It could be Shopify. It could be, it could be any team. Like we don't ever count ourselves out. We don't, we don't ever give up on a series. So I think. If there's a series to win, it's gonna be this one, and th- uh, especially coming out of London, uh, with our the pro points we got, um, 
this will perpetuate us like this will get us into that next uh, level of play that we're looking to play like we don't really scrim that often because the quality of our scrims are really not that good so lately we've just been doing our own thing and studying and doing our homework as much as we can so yeah like a problem is that one team that does scrim a ton is is uh, complexity. I, I'm always watching yep. Ryan and Huss's scrims, and uh, yep. but like you said, I mean, I feel like if there's any opportunity, you know, to win, to to actually beat out and and pull off a, a pretty big upset, complexity, they're they're wobbled right now. You know, this yep. is this is your guys' yep. opportunity to put to to deliver that knockout blow, and to and and to think like you said, you know. If you guys win this, this now propels you into a much different conversation. Uh, right. You know, it it, it 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 could be one that shifts the tears in your favor. So, uh, not many times do you have an opportunity to kind of create your own destiny with one or two series, but you guys do, and uh, I'm excited. I'm 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 not only excited, but I'm also rooting for you. I really yeah. am. Don't 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 Thank tell. You. Don't tell Mick Wendo. Don't don't tell him. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Pass United three two over TMNT. Uh, this what I you know I'm gonna bring this up and I'm I'm I am gonna talk about this actually. Mm -hmm. Um, TMNT were kind of dominating. They were like I watched the series and uh, and at one point I swear it looked like Glitchy was like jumping around and doing like random three sixties and see three sixties and that game four <laughs> King of the Hill and then Pass United get like the kill and like come back and win that game four and then they go into game five and win I want to say it was I want to say it was fifty to forty nine but fifty to forty eight maybe but like if TMNT were literally dominating. I swear in that game four, it looked like Glitch was doing 360. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but it looked like he was like a celebrating a little bit too early. And Passion, <laughs> Passion United, they, oh, by the way, Palpheus uh, in the chat with the follow. So pa Palpheus of Passion United in the in the chat. Uh, you said you watched this. Like, wh what did you see? <laughs> Um, I saw Passion United come back in the Slayer, um, and that was a real disappointing loss for TMNT. Like, they were up, like, a decent amount of kills on the Aquarius Slayer, and it was on, honestly, in my opinion, it was a throw. Like, I, I watched it back, like, twice, and I'm just like, this is like it's a guaranteed slayer in my opinion and they went 1-1 in the series after that and then i think the next one was like an oddball or something i forget but i feel like on paper uh tmnt should win the series like no offense to palfius and maddie like those guys are the bros those are those guys are the homies they're real real cool people but i think on paper tmnt should should win that but uh they they made a statement and they Passion United got it. I think um I think this roster could do good if they if they stick. I like this roster. Yeah, I feel like not not even just on paper, uh not even just on paper, but even watching the matchup, it felt like TMNT were in control, like I, most of the time. But you know, we got that passion. Palfius and Maddie been teaming for a little while now, and uh, um, they had a nice little core four that they were running with. Now, I just like the first time that I've seen them running with a little bit of a different roster. Now you got Bejesus coming in. I've seen him in a, t a lot of eights lobbies, uh, yeah. not playing, but watching. But I've watched him play. <laughs> and then uh, Bigaloo, who I I swear. I could have swore Bigaloo was mouse and keyboard. I could be wrong. It might not be. Uh, no, he's a controller player. He's yeah. a he's a cool dude. Okay, he never was mind. on the USAE team, right? He was on the USAE. That okay? Maybe, maybe, maybe I was like, I'm trying to remember. Like, where, where do I remember that name from? Because I've seen it before, uh, and I thought it was mouse and keyboard, but maybe maybe it was that USAE's team. Uh, yeah, I, I either I way, it, it was. this this is another team trying to just like you know knock on the door of something great. You know, very you know kind of similar to a walk where you guys are trying uh, trying to uh, a path you guys are trying to walk and a win against CMNT. Hey, 
that's a big win. They should be excited, and they made it to day two. Yep. You know, my question is, how far do you make it into day two? Uh, probably not very far because you ran into still deciding. Uh, <laughs> that's not your fault. I'm, not, I'm, I'm saying like, <laughs> like if there's any team, like man, like you you ran into still decide. It's like damn, bro. That, but I will say, big win against TMNT. Congratulations yeah. making it here. And and the only thing scarier than a, than a team that's the favorites, you know, made up of 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 you know former professional players or even still professional players, is a team yeah. with nothing to lose. So you yeah. know, like, and you're yeah. you're going into this matchup, and you know everybody's gonna is going to be against you. And people have yeah. counted you out, so you come yeah. in with like the spotlight not on you. If anything, there's no expectation. So come out there, and you should feel comfortable. And who knows, maybe pull off the upset uh, uh, of this year if you beat yeah. out still deciding. But it's dangerous. They, hey, you got nothing to lose, baby. <laughs> um, one thing about this series is that like. Still, just that still deciding roster is like they're gonna play as undisciplined as it gets. Like I watched Manny do three G slides on streets against uh uh unders team, and like it was I can't believe I couldn't believe what I was watching. Like for you to be like they just they just if they're playing against a team that they're more likely to win, they're going to play as undisciplined as they want. Like they're not even playing real halo. They're not going to, that's how I see it. Mm -hmm. Like they're just going to run out into the map and just deal damage. And if you're not going to shoot them back, then they have the space that you, that you gave them. It's, that's just how it's going to be. So if, if passion United wants to win, uh, two, two, every lane and they win. And uh, we'll see, you know. Hey, some, sometimes, sometimes, uh, team, like I said, teams will overlook another team, and and still deciding will most likely do that. They they will fly, they will play some crazy Halo, and you're gonna have to you're gonna have to punch them in the face. You know, you're yeah. gonna you're gonna have to if they don't respect you, you yeah. gotta go and demand that respect. You know, yeah, <laughs> exactly. You wanna, and, yeah, you wanna you want to force them to play a game where they're playing disciplined so that not only you can learn from the series, but like actually get it out of them to play a good game. You know, like you don't want to get three would and like they weren't even doing anything special on the map. They're just disrespecting you on the map. Like that's not what you want to see in VOD where like they're just flying at you and you can't learn from how they're playing because they're not even really playing Halo. But if you bring out, like real disciplined halo out of them then you're gonna learn a lot from the series so even if they don't win like a win in my opinion for them is to be able to learn from how they played against them for sure for sure love that uh sending baseline did beat out that clutch academy roster which leaves us with incognito going up against a send baseline so you got uh, Descendant, King Nick, Barcode, and Gyoki. Meanwhile, another side of things, Sylvanic, Ezo, Ivanized, and now Boom coming back. So, uh, Sylvanic, uh, Ezo, and Ivanized, I feel like they've been teaming for a little bit. I remember Ivanized mm -hmm. co Collective uh, being that kind of duo for a bit. Ezo obviously having a big free-for-all uh, in Halo Infinite, and then Sylvanic, who's been a grinder. I used to, I used to play him in like Halo 5 uh, Octagons all the time. Uh, and obviously the return of Boehm, who've uh, who's been a bit of a journeyman in Halo Infinite, but has mm -hmm. always been very good. Uh, uh, he filled in for Native uh, Red a few times. We've seen him on um, that Believe the Hype roster with Monster, I believe. So we, we've yep. we've seen him around the block. Incognito versus Ascend Baseline. Um, I think this. I think Ascending Baseline can win. Like I feel like this tournament of all tournaments is like the closest the amateurs have been to like the established players just because of just roster changes and uh the new meta and all of all the sort i think this is the closest it's ever been so if just like our bracket like this bracket is like very 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 winnable for a send baseline i I like Ascend Baseline. I think I like them against a lot of other teams. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I, I don't like them against Incognito. 
Um, no. I, th- I think uh, I think Gilkey and King Nick are, are going to play very disciplined Halo. They're not going to make a lot of mistakes. Uh, Barcode Descendant, like, you know, even if they don't pop off in game one, they'll pop off in game two and three. They don't pop off a game two. They'll have a great game one and three. Like, like even if they don't have like a great one game in a series, it takes three in order to win. So I feel like two out of three games, they're going to have crazy games as far as on the stat sheet, uh, especially yeah. descendant. And that's, that's enough for me. The balance between playing good fundamental halo, like Kane, Nick and Gilkey will play. And the the firepower, the pop off potential of barcode and car and uh, excuse me, descendant. Um, I I I don't like I, I like ascending base. I just don't like them in this matchup. Um, I I I would like them more against like kind of like what you said against still deciding. Only because I feel like still deciding may not respect them as much. Like like kind of said uh mm-hmm. with your previous statement, and maybe you can catch them off guard. In my opinion, like Gilkey and King Nick, it's clock in clock out. I don't think you're gonna catch them off guard. Uh, into, yeah, into, into I can see that. I can um, see that. So, it, 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 to me, it's more about the matchup they're against as opposed to me not believing in the team. And uh, But either way, whether it's the lower bracket or the upper bracket, we saw some great matchups on Sunday, and we're going to see some great matches on Thursday with, with the conclusion right. of our tournament day two. Uh, that that was our HCS report. That was our bracket breakdown. Uh, we had, we had a little bit of an interview in there too. Which, by the way, again, uh, thank you so much for coming on and doing this, and 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 th- and and thank you for being so great. Like that, I feel like uh, you've already started making a lot of fans with the way you guys and Sign Esports have been playing. But I'm glad that I got to, I got the chance to sh- share my little bit of, of platform that I have, uh, and just and, and people get to hear your voice. I'm sure. Anybody who's heard you speak today have now become a fan of you as well. <laughs> so, I hope so, I hope so. <laughs> is there anything that you wanted to let uh, anybody know? You know, uh, from you know, from yourself, from the from the tournament to day two, what whatever it is, um, uh, anything you want you want to talk about before we c- conclude the video? Um, I wanted to talk about London. Oh my gosh! Uh, I can't. I didn't talk. <laughs> yeah. I totally forgot about London. Yeah, yeah. London. yeah please. Um, London was a crazy event for my team, like both good and bad. Uh, as most people know, um, Devin's flight uh got delayed twice and then it got canceled. So he actually ended up coming. He ended up at the hotel next to the event, uh, a couple hours before the tournament. He, I think he got to his hotel at like six a.m. Wow. So like. He had a rough time getting here. Uh, it is crazy story, crazy story. And um, um, a lot of only my team knows this, but um, the night before uh our tournament, I had broken up with my girlfriend. So like a lot of personal shit going on, and uh, I didn't let what was happening in my personal life get to me. I even asked my teammates like yo do you guys think like do you guys think i was playing well and they were like yo like i don't know how you did it like if i was going through that i don't know what kind of halo i would have been playing so uh, my teammates commend me for that and just to put it out there for anyone else like shit is gonna hit the fan you know so like if you're doing what you love then you know you're gonna be you're gonna be um you're gonna be all right. That's crazy. I I I didn't know about any of that. I didn't know about Dark Matters Fly. I didn't know about what was going on in the uh, uh in your personal life. And I feel like uh and a lot of people forget that like you know obviously watch you guys as competitors. You know on on whether it's a monitor or a TV screen, uh, depending on how yeah. you watch. But yeah. we forget that you know you guys are humans just like us. You know mm-hmm. like good days, bad days. You know like. Uh, through sickness, health, whatever, whatever it is, um, there are intangibles. There's there's outside factors that go in on top of you having to prepare. So, um, yeah, exactly. wow, I, I I didn't know that. Um, well, out, outside of that, how did you feel about the London experience and whatnot? Did you did you get to see anything? Did you get to did you eat any interesting oh, foods and whatnot? London, <laughs> London was great. Um, 
I didn't really get to eat like any really interesting things. Um, we went to this one spot. Uh, it was me and my team. It was called Nando's. Uh, that supposedly, there. <laughs> yo, it was good, <laughs> and it was actually like the first time I actually bought my own drink. I don't really drink at all. I don't. I really don't. And so that was like the first time I ever bought like my own drink. Um, Still wouldn't even be able to hear, which is kind yeah. of funny. <laughs> they really, yeah. That De- even Devs in the chat saying those drinks were amazing. They were like these, um, it were these uh fruit cocktails. One was like mango, pineapple. The other one was like watermelon. He bought like four of them, and I I got two. I think Angel got two, and it was it was a great time. Nando's was really good. Uh, the food is good over there. Just like the supermarkets just look better than they do here the food just more looks looks more real i don't know i feel like when i went to nando's um yeah like the 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 chicken sandwiches was really good and for a place that's like kind of a fast foodie type of place like if i if i go to like you know buffalo wild wings here that's a comparison i'm gonna try to make even though it's not exactly the same but still yeah yeah Yeah, and i eat like a fried chicken sandwich i I feel heavy afterwards. I feel heavy yes, after. Exactly. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, damn, exactly. man. Like, like, I, like, like, I just like ate terribly. But like, when I eat, when you eat Nando's, it's like, it's, it's all like, you know, it's, it's peri peri chicken right off the grill type of stuff. Exactly. So like, it's just yeah. like protein, not fried, not battered, not drowned in butter. And it was seasoned yeah. well. It, it was, it was good. And I'm yeah, over here like, good. I'm like, oh snap! Like, I, I could do, I can do a little bit of Nando's and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And, and more importantly not feel like crap afterwards where a lot of like yeah. the other uh chains that are similar to that out here that's how that's kind of how it is and whatnot is preservatives and all this stuff so um yeah. some of the i'm not gonna lie some of the food i had out there was not a fan uh but yeah i can, I can see that <laughs> but a, a lot a lot of it if you if you, if you pick and choose where what you go and where, and where you go there's definitely some good food and good experiences out there i wish I wish I would have stayed out there like a few extra days or like a week extra so I could really experience because it was my yeah. first time uh, mm-hmm. o- overseas in, in Europe and London and whatnot. So I wish I could have experienced it more. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dev is also in the chat saying uh, we all made finals in all the side tourneys. He got he got fifth or sixth in the FFA. I'm not sure which one. Tied. So f- then, tied for fifth. Yeah, tied for fifth. Yeah, yeah. And then... um. Uh, me, Angel, and Ty were all in the two v two final. Yeah, <laughs> they re- they reverse swept us. Uh, they wanted it more, which it went to a game five, twenty four, twenty five. It's crazy. I want to say it was you two, Ty, and was it Descendant that felt yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Descendant yeah. that it was uh, Descendant. So I was like, oh, is that, it was interesting. Descendant, obviously, it was. You know, obviously, Descendant and Ryan Noob and the rest of the crew were looking for things to do after the disqualification. So Ryan Noob yeah, went and yeah. won the free for all, and Descendant yeah, went in and, and won the two v two with Ty. Yeah. Uh, but that was really cool. That like literally throughout all the side tournaments, all of you guys found major success, and again, it just shows that you know you guys are knocking on the door of that next tier, and it's it's real. And I, I'm like I said, I'm glad. I hope as many people watch this as possible, and they're gonna be like, "Oh snap! I remember hearing from Uzi before he went pro, before he was making pool play every event and whatnot." Because you guys really yeah. are knocking on that next tier. So, um, guys, that was Uzi. I had a little bit of interview in the beginning. I had a little bit of conversation toward the end about London. I can't believe I forgot about London. And this <laughs> was uh, the HS report, a bracket breakdown of everything that went down on Sunday, leading up to. Thursday's tournament day two championship Thursday, if you will. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.